<laughs> Mike's Daily Podcast. I came up with the name Memphis for the last show. I thought that was fitting. It's a sad place to remember on the anniversary yesterday, but yet uh, it was ground zero for a lot of the things that change this country. I'm Mike Matthews. Welcome to today's show. It's F- F- episode 1597. We are almost there. Mike's Daily Podcast. It's a 1600. And I want to thank you, even if you are a Russian bot. Mike's Daily Podcast. Thanks for listening to the show today. And I am so happy it's Thursday because I have so much that I have to say. Because I'm supposed to tease what I want to talk about in the rest of the show. That's according to consultants that think they know better. Oh, God. The people that... Mike's Daily Podcast. Hey, well, tease what... Tell... Well, it's the old rule of tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, then tell them what you told them. Mike's... That's just... Daily... The most boring... Podcast... Strategy. Yeah! But Mike, it makes sense. It's logical. No, it's boring. It's because it tells you... It says, I'm going to be completely predictable. I'm going to do this... Then tell you what I'm. this is, and then I'm going to say what this was and talk about what that was. And that's that. And then maybe you'll say... What was that all about? Look who just walked in! Oh, wait. He's still sleeping. Hold on. Still sleeping. Wow, how long will he sleep for? Good God, he sleeps a long time. All right. Madame Rudebega, you can talk. Hello, Michael Matthew. It's Madame Rudebega. Oh, he woke up. Yes, the nondescript described person just woke up. Look who else walked in. Hello, dear Mike. This is Valentino, the parking attendant. And this is Bison Bentley. Do you know that? Mike, predictability is an important thing there. People like it, and they like it when things are predictable. I had no idea that was going to play day. Neither did I. Do you know that? Yes, it was. It took us off guard. It was We were unawares, which I think we actually used as the name of a podcast one time, unawares. But I think today we'll go with predictability because that's what this show is about. Predictability, isn't it? No. And here's today's podcast picture. Oh, I... <coughs> I'm going to eat cookie. I'm taking a breather. Sorry. All right, I think I'm okay. Ah, that's what she like. Oh, my, my, my. On a podcast, is it for it to be a... It's on time. Thank you. Where were we? Oh, yeah, we saw Bob yesterday. As I drink a little bit of my Matthews Chino, which you can get here at Cafe anyway. Mm. So good. So robust and full of coffee and ice. And Europeans don't like that combination. But yes, I saw Bob And Bob is a former drummer of a band He creates music He uh, has gone through and remastered everything That he has performed In the past several decades And he's a one-man machine And people should uh, hail his name from the mountaintops And say Bob Which I have just done as I was coughing up a lung But yeah that's Bob So I should I post a picture of Bob No I'll get Bob's at first before doing that um, But yeah Saw him yesterday We had a long chat about how there, The accidents In the Bay Area People get into accidents Constantly in the Bay Area In fact I ran into my friend Not literally I ran into my friend Dalton yesterday and I go, hey, Dalton. What's, and I look at his car, and Dalton's car has got a big old dent, like the whole right headlight's been ripped off. What happened, Dalton? He goes, oh, well, I tried to slam on my brakes, and my brakes didn't work, so I had to stop myself somehow. So I ran into the, the, something on the side of the... Uh, good gosh, it shouldn't happen. Get your brakes fixed. Now I'm sounding like Bill Adams, who does a show. I produced a show for 
uh, at the radio station that I work for. Bill Adams has a car dealership. And I know the guy that he rents his place from. So it's sort of incestuous in the Podcastro Valley. Um, and I guess that's all I was going to talk about. Should I post a picture from Podcastro Valley? I will at some point. I have it many times. But uh, we'll find a significant picture in a moment. First off, I was watching this Phil Collins video, a recent Phil Collins video of him singing Easy Lover. Uh, and it, it saddened me greatly. Ooh, this one? A sunset in Alameda? I haven't been to Alameda in so long. I need to go there again. And there was a lovely sunset going on as I was looking out over towards Jack London Square. And I think I'll post that picture. So one of the one of these or the marina there. Yeah, we'll pick one of these. I have so many to choose from. And Phil Collins was singing Easy Lover. And it was just so sad because he was sitting down at like a table like he was sitting there being, I, I don't know, giving blood at a table. And while he was there, oh, I guess I'll sing a song. And he can't sing the high notes anymore. It's too, he looks like he's in such pain when he's singing. Stop touring, Phil. You're done. We love you. We loved your music. We loved, some of it was crap, but we loved some of your Genesis stuff. That was awesome, but it's done. Don't. I don't like my rock stars sitting down while they're singing. Oh, but Mike, they get to keep touring. They get to keep singing for the fans, and and it's the way of... uh, No! They're supposed to be standing. They're supposed to be standing and doing cool things with the mic stand and throwing it around and doing the Steve Tyler thing. That's what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to dance. They're supposed to James Brown it up. They're supposed to have a great time up on stage and get us moving. That's the whole point. If you're sitting down, you're going to be like the rest of us fat butt people in the, in the audience sitting down. No. I don't go to concerts for that. Uh, get up. Stand up. And what's so funny is Phil Collins had a song with Genesis called Home by the Sea. Where he, he sings in the chorus, sit down, sit down. No, you won't feel a thing for the rest of your days. Sit down, because we will live our lives in what we tell you. Oh, let us relive our lives in what we tell you. Ken Rudin. I love him dearly. I don't know if he sits that, down uh, when he does his podcast. Do Adults on the media show no sign. But he produces communities, Eastern Iowa communities, Mid Michigan communities. He replayed the Sinclair Broadcasting thing, where Sinclair Broadcasting had all their news people say this stupid thing that some conservative Trump kisser was wrote up, said, "Okay, uh, I owe, I pay your paychecks, all you." Uh, anchors, you have to read this. We are extremely proud of the quality, balanced journalism that CBS 4 News produces. But we are concerned about some Anyway, I won't play that because it's kind of hard to understand. But yeah, he. So all these people had to read this verbatim thing about fake news. And it just, oh, it drives me nuts. First off, I really hate news anchors. That There are very few that I like that I trust. For the most part, they just, they've got a teleprompter and they just read it verbatim and they don't, oh, and that, we had a show this week called Verbatim. The show is turning into a review of other shows that I've done. And it's just, it, there's no, it's predictable. There's no unpredictability. And I know some people don't want predictability. They just want their anchors to look good and to sound good and to... Just say what they're not really listening to them anyway. But oh, I'm so glad whoever it was that put that on YouTube uh, did that because it it just exposes what crap Sinclair Broadcasting is. Find out who is your Sinclair broadcaster in your area and do not watch them. 
Do not watch them. Make sure you ban them from your TV. Delete them from that uh, thing that your television does where it, you know, hey, well, let's see all the channels that you have. Delete them. Don't ever watch their Sinclair Broadcasting. They're horrible. Do you know that Walmart, speaking of Sinclair Broadcasting, which I guess they're sort of the Walmart of television news, but or Fox News is that maybe, but Walmart is going to carry Narcan soon. That uh, thing that helps you when you're ODing or what, I forget, I don't know what it does exactly, but I thought that was interesting because before you used to only be able to get that at your doctor's, but Walmart's going to get that crazy. And Saudi Arabia is doing all kinds of stuff. As I was watching Wall Street Journal, they were talking on their video page. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm having all kinds of issues today. And this Kleenex is turning into my savior. Uh, Saudi Arabia, it, the, the young prince there is doing all kinds of stuff, trying to trying to break down walls and open up Saudi Arabia to technology and they're having Snapchat and uh, that's all I have with that story. I just have bits and pieces of that. Um, thank you for listening to this show today. It's a bit all over the place. Oh, I did want to mention in the wonderful Time magazine this was I think from three years ago, two years ago it Totally was kissing the rump of Harvey Weinstein. And it mentions here, Harvey Weinstein would love to talk about Finding Neverland, the new musical that marks his first venture into full-scale Broadway producing. But first he has some image work to do. The press perpetuates a myth, says Weinstein, the independent movie king pin, known as much for his volatile temperament as for films such as Pulp Fiction, Goodwill Hunting, and The English Patient. The mistaken idea of what I do is that I'm a cigar-smoking mogul. I've never smoked a cigar in my life. No cigar, but close. Walking through his offices in downtown Manhattan, Weinstein has the defiantly rumpled look, a scruffy stubble of beard, a white dress shirt that looks as if it's never been tucked in, Of a man who doesn't plan by anyone else's rules. As the founder, with his brother Bob, of Miramax Films, and later, after separating from Disney, which bought Miramax in 1993, the Weinstein Company, he's known as a passionate, hands-on producer, an aggressive marketer of his wares, and a man you don't want to cross. Controversy seems to dog him. Police are investigating an Italian model's claim that Weinstein groped her in his offices on March 27th. Weinstein denies it, and no charges have been filed. Of course, now we know the whole story. She couldn't file charges because he freaking has everyone under his thumb. He had the courts rigged. He had he had he used every system. He dumped so much money into lawyers and his legal team and people in his company were defending his disgusting habits of of using women of of shame them. Just the he's ah. Oh, I take it back, Phil Collins. You can sit down and sing all you want. Harvey Weinstein is who I'm mad at now. Ah, oh, I know that's sort of a late gripe, but. She's. The, I read that in Time Magazine And the rest of the article is kissing his butt And I just it, It's sickened me I'm like Time Magazine was helping out Harvey Weinstein Through a lot of this Through a lot of what he was doing And then I got this Celebrator Beer Magazine It's free When you walk into a brewery It's usually sitting there It said happy birthday to Facebook the, that now indispensable social networking service was launched February 4th of 2004 by Mark Zuckerberg and his college roommates. It now helps billions of people to keep tabs around the globe. For beer lovers, it is nothing short of a miracle in helping us justify our alcohol to our alcoholism. Yeah, so not the best newspaper, this. Uh, this the former CEO of Anheuser-Busch August Adolphus Bush wasn't he a character in Willy Wonka? 
was arrested recently after he awkwardly landed his helicopter in an Illinois business park and returned appearing too intoxicated to take off. Police said officers identified the pilot as the heir to the Bush fortune. Oh, when a Moyle walks into the room with his sacred ritual instruments steeped in Jewish significance and honed with years of handiwork, the adults could generally use a beer. A new beer from the always fastidiously appropriate Schmaltz Brewing in Clifton Park, New York, captures 4,000 years of Jewish tradition carried down from Abraham to John Stewart and offers up the perfect bubbly balm to soothe the bubbles and other... Oh, the boob... The boobit... Boob... I don't know how to say that. Uh, my Yiddish isn't very good. And other bystanders... And, bystanders and s- sanctify such a precious moment. Well, there, uh, if you're destined for a session with a circumcision... A circum... New word. Session... Ale might be perfect for you. Okay. There was... Th- Whoa, my nose. It is not clear. As clear a nasal passage as this guy's that was snoring earlier. This is much clearer. So that was in it. Uh, Ken Rudin did a wonderful job talking about, on his podcast, The Political Junkie, about how... Trump is taking aim at Jeff Bezos, the head of Amazon, who also owns the uh, Washington Post, Washington Journal, Washington Post, and how he doesn't like the fake news, but yet uh, Jeff Bezos has no editorial control of it, and... And would I be able to find it if I press... press to you, the feeling... It's right here. Listen, welcome to episode... Two. Back against biased reporting took another step last week. We learned that many TV news anchors on stations owned by Sinclair Broadcast Group were instructed to give strikingly. Sim- All right, we got to that. Sinclair is far superior to CNN and even more fake NBC. Oh, that's which what is Trump a total said. Total joke. Unquote. I get the sense that this is extremely dangerous to our democracy. That was what Meanwhile, Sinclair was saying. Member of Congress Elizabeth Esty of Connecticut. Okay. Well. At any rate, that's what's going on in our world. As we go outside a cafe anyway, we're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcaster Valley. The show is a little bit disjointed, but I think we got a lot done. New Englander, Patriots, wide receiver Julian Edelman may have helped prevent another school shooting. The story evolves around his disturbing comments someone typed on one of Edelman's Instagram posts saying that they were going to shoot up a school watched the news the comment was brought to edelman's attention by another reader who direct message him, messaged him saying dude there is a kid in your comment section saying he's going to shoot up a school edelman immediately reacted when he thought about the recent school shooting according to the remote edelman asked his assistant to read through the comments on his post and sure enough she found the above mentioned threat and his assistant Shannon Moen. Good job, Shannon. Called 911. Always call 911. There's all kinds of craziness in this world. And you need to call 911 to stop it. If you see a bunch of kids riding down the street with their bikes going the wrong direction, wrong way traffic, which is what Bob and I were discussing yesterday. Because Bob has a big dent in his truck. And I'm like, how did that happen? And Bob's, well, I was trying to make a left-hand turn. And this guy T-boned me Who's trying to go around And you just gotta keep your eyes open You gotta be aware of what's going on You gotta be aware Be looking out for the Daltons in the world And he said That when you see something crazy Like like these kids Riding all at the same time Going up the traffic Thinking oh the cars are gonna swerve and miss me I'm entitled I'm privileged you call the police. Let them know. 911. The police are always, that's what we need to hear about is this stuff. So that was a good job, Shannon. Fle- speaking back into the uh, meme situation, like we were talking about with Sinclair, Fleetwood Mac's dream meme, dreams meme, thunder only happens when it's raining. They, uh, the color guard meme. The, on the YouTube video Has catapulted Fleetwood Mac back Onto the Billboard Hot 100 They haven't been there in a while 
They used to dominate the charts, as did Phil Collins. Trump to target Russian oligarchs tied to Putin in fresh sanctions. The United States is expected to impose additional sanctions against Russia by tomorrow. The sanctions are economic and designed to target oligarchs with ties to Putin. And back to Facebook, which is this wonderful, wonderful, just got started in a dorm room in 2004. And oh, if I drink beer, it's a savior to me. Woo! Facebook on Wednesday said that the data of up to 87 million users may have been improperly shared with a political consulting firm. A figure far higher than the estimated 50 million that had been widely cited since the leak was reported last month. Mark Zuckerberg also announced that Facebook would offer all of its users the same tools and controls required under European privacy rules. The European rules, which go into effect next month, give people more control over how companies use their uh, digital data. And, of course, Mark said... You know, we have a basic responsibility to protect people's data. And if we can't do that, then we don't deserve to have the opportunity to serve people. I hope the show has been predictable in every possible way and that you got a lot out of it. Next show, it's going to be the wonderful Shelly Shuhart, Floyd the Floorman, and John Deere the Engineer. See, I teased something happening in the next show in order to tell you there is something predictable happening. And, yeah... <laughs> Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.